Welcome to Kiss the Reviews. I'm Armando. That's Corey. And today, a special show. By request, we are doing 2001's Legally Blonde. And before we get started, I'm going to go into my notebook here. If you'd like to follow us on Twitter. Look at you, you fancy follow- boy. I know, right? You could follow me at Junior D's. You could follow Corey at Corey underscore Idol. I'm going to put this out there one more time, uh, maybe a couple more times. Who knows? But uh, we're getting close to that thousand subscriber mark. So we're going to do a special show uh, when we get to that thousand subscriber mark mm-hmm. at or around that time. So if you want to ask us any questions about how we do the show, where we met, all those lovely things, uh, you can either send them to us on Twitter or you can comment on the videos and, and put the questions there and we will answer them in our special thousand sub show. And we also have uh, another announcement regarding Legally Blonde. Yeah, this uh, this kind of was a little bit crazy. Um, we actually, I'm not going to put anybody's name out there because they didn't say whether or not I should. So uh, we don't put people on blast like that on this show. Not our viewers anyway. You make a movie, <laughs> we're going to put your name out there. But in this case, you're cool. But uh, we got a $100 donation to do this movie. And we saw it as an opportunity to expand the show a little bit. Now, if you're worried, because I know this was controversial in the past, Double Impact is still slated to come out this Friday. You will still get your normal show. However, this $100 donation has given us the opportunity, as I said, to expand our uh, horizons a little bit. And what I mean by that is, If you donate $100 or more for us to do a movie, we will get it out ASAP. That is not replacing any show that week. We will always have our normally scheduled show on Friday. Your request list is just fine. However, if there is that $100 donation, we are immediately going to do that shit because we respect money. Yes. A lot. So we will do that. (laughs) That will come out. And you and hey, look, everybody wins because you guys get two shows. That's true. That's true. And so, I get- and, and this is important, real quick. Uh, uh, by no means does this mean you have to donate a hundred dollars exactly. to see your movie. Yep. You still the, the normal rules still apply here. Whether it's a dollar, twenty dollars, ten dollars, we don't give a shit. You will still on Friday see your normal requests that'll fall in line. This is just an additional little bonus for everyone. And, uh, uh, hopefully it's worth it. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to equate it to this. I'll tag it with this and then we'll get into the movie. Um, we're like hookers. So (laughs) if you give us a dollar, you're going to, you're going to get a dollar's worth. If you give us a hundred, we're going the extra mile. There's going to be swings involved and like candles and like all kinds of shit. Like it'll be, it'll be pretty dope. So, um, with that said, let's get into 2001's Legally Blonde. This film stars Reese Witherspoon as L. Woods, Matthew Davis as Warner, Luke Wilson as Emmett, Selma Blair as Vivian, and Victor Garber as Professor Callahan or Professor Touchy Hands. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably way more accurate. You just knew that fucker. The second he called on her in class that first time, you're like, oh, he's pulling his dick out. <laughs> I'm a man who knows what he wants. So let's jump right into this. Uh, This movie opens with Elle Woods getting ready for the day at her sorority house. And there's random shots of college things that apparently I never experienced. This seems like the most colorful, fun college ever. Mm. Like, here's the thing about these college movies and especially the college comedies. It's like, I I went to college. I didn't experience any of this shit. I don't care what movie it is. The minute they show the campus and like things are going on and I never threw a Frisbee. I know it was, it was, it was mostly just me drunk. And like the, the most you saw me outside was I might've passed out on a bench. Like that's, that's about it. But. Yeah, I, I I had one football thrown to me when I was on a college <laughs> campus because I did not go to a school like that. And uh, I dropped the pass and somebody said, nice hands, pussy. And that was my college experience. 
<laughs> they said nice hands, feet, and you walked away. She then meets her friends who are all excited that Elle's boyfriend, Warner, is going to propose to her that night. He asked her out to a you know, nice fancy dinner. She shows off her intelligence, at least in the fashion realm, when she's mm. trying on clothes for that evening. And that night, her boyfriend, Warner, picks her up and they go to dinner. He tells her that he invited her to dinner to let her know that because he's going to Harvard Law School and he wants to get into politics, he needs to break up with her because he needs to marry a Jackie and not a Marilyn. Yeah. And now we know where Andrew from Whiplash got his motivation <laughs> yes. and his fucking ego. They must yes. be in the same uh, gene pool. Yeah, and and I got a I got a quick don't do that for everybody too. Don't do that, it's not good for you. Hi boyfriends out there or girlfriend who whoever the hell. You're 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 going to law school, you're you want to be this important person and I'm politics, blah blah blah. Have you seen the bubbleheads that are out there that are married to some of these politicians and, you know, uh political wannabes out there have have you seen the political wannabes bubbleheads out there they're all morons you don't need to marry a jackie or a marilyn or a jack you don't need to marry any of these these people do they make yeah. you happy then go ahead and do your thing okay well and if i mean they, and if they don't it. kick them to the curb Let's face facts. There's only one real question if you're going to be in politics. Do they care if an intern sucks your dick? <laughs> because if the answer is no, that's the one for you. Hell yes. After taking time to be a little depressed, eat her chocolates, yada yada, Elle decides that she's going to go to Harvard Law to prove to Warner and everybody else, because everybody thinks she's a moron, that she's marriage material and, and Warner deserves her. So she then starts to study for the LSATs, and we get a montage of her getting prepared to take said LSATs. When I first saw this happening, I was like, you know, you don't have to do things because somebody doesn't like you. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of wrong motivation. And then I was like, whoa, pump your brakes, hypocrite. That's literally how you live your entire life. <laughs> So immediately I empathize with her. I was on board. However, I'm going to dispel this notion for guys, girls, whomever. Marriage material is not a real thing. No. Don't do something to prove that you're marriage material. That even drove me crazy at the end of the movie. Spoiler alert. <laughs> where she ends up getting engaged at the end of the movie. Yeah. And it's just like, ugh. you know what I mean? Like that was, yeah. that was the big get for her. Not yeah. graduating law school, not winning a case, not having the self-confidence to realize that Warner is a piece of shit, but to get like, this whole thing was a 1950s fucking like, this is how to win your guy. <laughs> well, that was, that's, that's the, hey, the ladies, one thing. Hey ladies, to make meatloaf with some regular saltine crackers. <laughs> That'll help you win your fella over. <laughs> It would have been really good to end the movie with her telling Warner to fucking kick rocks and then like end a movie and, and whatever. Right. But and we'll get to the the ending when we actually get there. But because I have some some issues with it. But after she takes these LSATs, mm -hmm. the whole sorority gets together. They celebrate. She has her Rudy moment. They put her on, you know, on their shoulders and they march around the sorority house because she got a 179 on the LSATs, and I'm too stupid to know what the hell that means. So we'll move on from there. She also sends a video, mostly of her in a bikini, uh, as her entrance letter into Harvard. And the board decides to give her a shot. And Elle Woods is now headed to Harvard. This PSA is going to kind of lean back to what Fresh does from that movie. Not the one where we're eating people, but <laughs> Fresh. Uh, with Samuel L. Jackson. Corey's Life Lessons. Hi, kids. Uncle Corey here. Uh, uh, use what you got to manipulate people that want that. Absolutely. If you think she's just like, oh, I'm in a bikini because I like wearing my bikini. Maybe. But also, she knows she's sending this videotape to a bunch of stuffy white fucking men. 
<laughs> exactly. They were at least going to have the conversation that, like, well, she does have a 4.0. She did get a 1700. You know what I mean? Like her extracurriculars, yeah. like they'll start making the case the more they look at that pause videotape. Uh, Guarantee. Yeah. And they all took turns taking the videotape and that giant TV into the bathroom and masturbating vigorously. And then and then they decided to give her a shot. <laughs> oh, me, this is Harvard, brother. This is skull and bones territory. They did that shit in the room together like brothers do. <laughs> They played they played the ookie cookie game. <laughs> Probably by playing Flight of the Valkyries in the background. Is it possible this story is true? Yes, it is. Our imagination for masturbatory scenarios on this show has is really excellent. Like if anybody's out there casting a show just about jerking off, we're, <laughs> we're your guys. We're, we're your guys. Absolutely. We've talked about crying and masturbating, candles, ookie cookie. It's, I mean, it, it really runs the entire spectrum. So I'm oh, proud yeah. of that. I'm there proud isn't that. a jerk or a bean flick we don't know. <laughs> As she gets to campus, we have the fish out of water scenes of her arriving, signing up for classes, and generally interacting with everyone and basically just being the alien that shows up at, at Harvard's campus. Yeah, she dared to have a personality, which <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I will get I know this is a comedy, so everything's hyperbolic. Cool. Fair. Mm -hmm. However, this is one of the most accurate descriptions of people that go to Harvard I've ever seen. You can walk around that campus willy nilly. It's yep. totally, you know, it's wide open. It's just like any other major university. You can just kind of wander around. It is a bunch of brown sweater wearing nerds with their heads fucking down that look at you like, ugh. like I wore Converse there and they all looked at me like I like you talk about poor people. <laughs> <laughs> it was unbelievable. Elle then runs into Warner, who is shocked mm -hmm. to see her and that she got into Harvard Law. And after going to her very first class and getting kicked out, she runs into Emmett. He gives her a few pointers on how to handle some of the professors. This professor, you know, gets his questions from this. This professor likes when you, you know, challenge him this way and yada, yada. Now, and I have to ask a question here because yeah. I mean, she is met with so much animosity mm -hmm. immediately. Now, a rich kid in a Porsche showing up to Harvard, not a big deal. No. Having all that luggage with her, not a big deal. Having the dog, a little extreme. Wearing the pink, having personality, that's going to get you. But the rest of the time, like, I don't get it. You know what I mean? Because, like, everybody's like, ugh, you're in this class and it, you shouldn't be and fuck you. And it's and like, well, wait a second. She's just, like, she's still past the tests. Yeah. Well, she, she actually says that. you have to get admitted. Yeah, I just don't understand it. She yeah, she says that to Warner at some point here in a little bit, I think when they're talking about the the internship with Callahan and he's mm -hmm. like, oh, you're trying out for that. Like, you're not mm -hmm. good enough. And she goes, I took the same fucking test that you did. I got into Harvard Law like, dude, mm -hmm. fucking eat shit. I don't understand. Right now. And I can understand Selma Blair. And her character not digging her at all because, you know, she's clearly there because of Warner. They're yeah. engaged. Cool, I get that. You're threatened. Yeah. But, like, everybody else is just such a dick to her for no reason. Well, and listen, there are a bunch of dudes, like, when, when she does that first, like, little group thing when she gets there and they're like, hi, my name is. And mm -hmm. she introduces herself and she's like, this is Bruiser and this is, like, I like pink and cool things. And these dudes who betwixt them i don't think have had a hand job in their life no even that, their own hands like oh i fell asleep <laughs> they are looking at her like ugh you're disgusting fyi that's not how that shit works because every single one of those guys is like drooling the entire time as she's speaking because they couldn't get laid in a whorehouse with a fistful of hundreds you're right it's fact. Whatever. You don't need to hit me over the head that she's out of place. 
No, it's just this just at this point to me, I was like, oh, we're watching Clueless. This oh, is Clueless absolutely. at Harvard. Cher graduated high school. She went to Harvard, and this is her story now, 100%. which is fine, totally yeah. fine. Yep. But also, cool. Yeah, uh, you you just at this point you know like literally where this movie's going to go. Absolutely, and 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 if you didn't when you paid the admission to watch the movie, <laughs> that's on you. <laughs> so Warner then meets L after class. His new fiance Vivian shows up as well. Elle is distraught and immediately heads to the nail salon to decompress. And this is where she meets Paulette, who becomes Elle's confidant. Anytime Jennifer Coolidge is in a movie, it is automatically good. <laughs> she only needs to be in like a scene for 45 seconds. And I'm like, yeah, it's an upgraded movie. She, we talk about, you and I have, have discussed uh, like funny comedic actresses. And yes. she is at the top of the list. You were right. So She's fantastic. And I, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if we've discussed her before on the show, but I'm pretty sure she comes from the same uh, school or improv troupe as like uh, Eugene Levy, Catherine O'Hara, yeah. John Candy. Yeah. All yeah. those old school guys. Christopher Guest, which is yes. why she's in so many of his fucking movies. Exactly. I was going to say, they're, they, they're the cast in pretty much every yeah. one of the comedies that I love. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> Paulette then, you know, gives Elle advice on, on how to steal the bastard back and get Warner back. And Elle then starts her journey to try and get Warner back. But everyone is mean to her. And Vivian invites... L to a quote unquote costume party, but she shows up and it's not a costume party and L makes the best of it and whatever. I have a quick don't do that on this. Don't do that. It's not good for you. Hi, literally everybody out there that has gone through a breakup or you have your, your rival, your exes new. Listen, if there's any contention between you and another person and then out of nowhere, they're like, hey, you want to come to a party? It's a costume party. Um, don't, A, a don't go. And, and B, if you do go, don't wear a costume. Just know that the person who's being an asshole to you is probably still being an asshole when they invite you to said party. <laughs> Every time there's there's some ulterior motive or angle in this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> and for L being so smart, like air quotes, uh, for L being so smart in this movie when it comes to certain things, she she's a moron when it comes to like judging people and seeing people for who they are. You know what I mean? You're right again. And that's probably just because she's always been pretty. You know that's what fair. I mean? Like she's never had any kind of real hate thrown her way. Uh, most of the time, which is fine. Uh, yeah. Good for you. And I, I give her credit <laughs> here for completely owning this. No, that's the one thing I really did like about it. It wasn't the, the typical trope where it's like you show up and it's like, Hmm, everybody's mean to me and this person lied to me. And then they just yep. like run out. She's just like, cool. I'm here. I guess this is what's happening. Which, yeah, exactly. Listen, I'm not going to lie. I look the way I look, so I act as such. If I looked the way L in this movie looked, I'd be cool with dressing up as a Playboy bunny and just playing it off as like, yeah, this is what I wear on Thursdays. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I'll be honest with you. If I showed up somewhere dressed like a Playboy bunny and somebody was pulling a prank on me, I'd do the same thing. Fuck it. Own it and then go home and have a jerk and cry as we've discussed numerous times. <laughs> Absolutely. Candles are not totally optional. So she tracks Warner down here. She finally realizes that nothing she does is going to be good enough for him. We then get another montage of L getting to work, studying, actually learning in her own L Woods style. And she then starts impressing her professors and classmates while also pissing Vivian off along the way. Both actresses here, being Reese and Selma Blair, were completely wasted with what they could actually do. Because Selma Blair was relegated to... <sighs> Great! Yeah. Good yeah. scene, Selma. Next. Great montage, gang. And then we have to have <laughs> that covered up with horrible one of the worst fucking soundtracks i've 
ever heard in my goddamn life. Well, you're you're also a man in your forties. Yes, it is. It is. A I can soundtrack. I can appreciate female empowering songs. But like, it's gonna be a great day because I'm wearing <laughs> lipstick and rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> like you're so condescending. Listen, Fuck you. it's it's. I'm I'm gonna play devil's advocate here. It's just a nice, light, fun, bubbly song. It's just like, hey, we're learning, and then this is Elwood style. Like I was, dude. Okay, first of all, fuck you. Okay, hey, I gotta don't do that. Don't do that. It's not good for you. Hi, Corey. Um, when you're watching a movie and there's like a mind, it's like, hey, we're all having fun. Don't be the guy that's sitting on the couch going harumph. Don't do it. Don't be that guy. Enjoy it. Enjoy it and don't pretend to be angry on the show. I know you were fucking, you were getting into that shit real, First real off, quick. I wasn't harumph. Because <laughs> when I harumph, I stand, I don't sit. You should know that. And second, my point was, <laughs> Armando, <laughs> that we've come a long way from unicorn rainbows bubblegum to. Katy Perry, Baby, You're a Firework, to Nicki Minaj, I am not Jasmine, I am Aladdin. Fuck yeah, that's right. That's how a fucking, that's an empowering song, not goddamn well, I'm bubble sorry. Gun, puppy dogs and ice cream. I'm sorry Nicki Minaj was four years old when this movie came out. Well, so the fuck, where, <laughs> little Kim, where were you? You were in prison. Make a fucking album over the phone. <laughs> So we then get the scene where Professor Callahan's firm is defending someone from a huge murder trial, and the caseload is so large that he's taking on first-year interns. Vivian, Warner, and L all make the cut, and Emmett is already on Callahan's staff. I, I appreciate how L gets there, too, because we can be like, ah, he's, she's there because he wants to fuck her. And that may be true, but also... You get to see the scene where she kind of twists and turns the defense about the guy with the sperm and donating the sperm to and seeing the yeah. kid and having parental rights, which is a great scene because that's pretty like you can go through all your law theories and books and motions and whatever. At the end of the day, that's all it is. You're just yeah. trying to find a little way to fucking twist a fucking excuse into a semantic argument yes. and get out of there. Because exactly. jury doesn't give a fuck about the motions and yeah. what was a properly filed legal brief and what wasn't. It's, does the glove fit? No? Then you must acquit. Exactly. And L meets the defendant for the firm in the firm's introduction to the client when they, when she, they actually bring her in. And Brooke Taylor, who is the defendant, is a fitness instructor who's on trial for murdering her husband, recognizes Elle from classes that she taught in Los Angeles. Yes, apparently Elle is one of those people that just leaves an impression everywhere they go. Absolutely. You know what? I'm not going to lie. Reese Witherspoon has left a lasting impression on me <laughs> over the years. <laughs> so, yeah. Elle is then determined to help Brooke because everyone on the firm's team thinks that Brooke is guilty because she mm -hmm. can't come up with an alibi and yada yada. So Elle goes to prison to visit Brooke to try to get her alibi. And she does get her alibi, but Brooke doesn't want to reveal it to anybody because it'll, it'll ruin her whole fitness empire if they find out that she was getting liposuction when her husband was murdered. <laughs> Dude, I was pissing my pants. Yes. And I didn't remember. Okay. So again, full disclosure, it's, it's been a long time since I've seen this movie mm -hmm. and this was probably a blockbuster, like $1 rental for me, like after it, after it hit shelves, but I don't remember this entire, like, this is why her alibi didn't come out and yada, yada. But <laughs> the, the alibi is so perfect. Like it oh. totally tracks. Like I can't, I'm not going to tell you my alibi because I'm this fitness guru and I was getting, you know, fat sucked out of my ass when the murder happened. So I'd rather go to prison than give up my fitness. empire. This is a fantastic example of basic comedy writing paying off to its fullest. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It, it's, it's so good. 
set up punchline. That's all it is. Yeah. There's nothing fancy about it, but it's so fucking funny. Yeah. And it's because it so plays right into this world. Exactly. Elle keeps her word to Brooke and doesn't tell anyone, including Callahan and the firm. Well, like, look, and, and I agree. Here's why I respect it and why I'm cool with it is because Allie Larder literally said, I would rather be in jail yes. than have people find this out. So it's yeah. like, cool. She made, she's a grown ass woman. She made her decision. Yeah. If that's where you if that's the way you want to play it, I'll, I'll keep it tight. We'll find it another way. Elle then gets a visit from Vivian in her dorm room and they start chatting about the case and Callahan and, it's this very nice exchange. And again, because I haven't seen this in a while, I was like, and because I'm an asshole, <laughs> I was like, what's this bitch's angle? Like I was oh, immediately, 100%. I totally forgot that like she was genuinely asking her questions and they started to become friends. I totally forgot about that whole thing. And I was like, what's her angle? I know she's got an angle. Yeah, I I really was expecting some sort of forced confession here. Yeah. Uh, Like whether she got her drunk or... Yeah. She's like, I've always wanted to be in a sorority and she makes her an honorary member or some bullshit and then spills the beans. But yeah, I really thought she was going to leverage the alibi and pull it out in court to look like she was the big shit. We, We then get to the trial. The trial starts and the first to the stand is the pool boy who says that he and Brooke had an affair. Elle then realizes that the pool boy's actually gay when he notices Elle's shoes and the specific designer. And I have to say, for as old as this movie is, I mean, it's not the oldest movie we've done, like some of the 80s and 70s yeah. shit where it's just like, whoa. But for as yeah. old as this movie is and things you were still allowed to say, they handled this so well. Like the way he drew out the confession, Luke Wilson draws out the confession here, the, yeah. the comedic reaction of, you know, like, oh, it's my friend and Chuck standing up and saying, you bitch and running out. Everything was about as on board for this era of movies and this era of uh, LGBTQ rights. How can I mean, it was great. I, it fun, was, I loved it. And I was it expecting was, at some point for them to trip up big time like that. No, no, no. Yeah, didn't. no, me, me too. No, it was well written. Mm-hmm. It was it was definitely well written. And Callahan then asks to see Elle in his office. He compliments her and offers for her to be a summer associate with his firm. As long, as long, aha, as long as she sleeps with him. And we obviously get the, you know, Vivian seeing the first part where he's hitting on her, but not the yep. second part where Elle tells him to go kick rocks. And Vivian then confronts Elle at the elevator and then walks away as the elevator door shut and Elle is distraught. Corey's Life Lessons. Hi, kids. Uncle Corey here. This is twofold. Uh, uh, One, if you're employing somebody or you're going to be an employer or somebody or you're a position of power, you know goddamn well. Just don't fucking do it. (laughs) It's not fucking worth it. Yeah. Just don't fucking do it. Besides, even if like there was some monetary gain in sleeping with L here, what's the fucking point? You know, I just I, like this this I don't understand. Like I get, believe me, I get the power of dick brain. But also, <laughs> come on, man. What the well, fuck are you doing? Like see, you you know, like you know that girl has no fucking earthly inkling, not one fucking pube hair in her wants anything to do with you sexually. No. So what the have fuck you, are you doing? Like, listen, it's just this, fucking gross. This goes, back, this goes back to what we always talked about. Motherfucker, have you looked at yourself in the mirror? Ain't nobody want to fuck you. Yes. What the fuck? Like, back the fuck off, first of all. Um, second of all, I, I grew up, and it's not like, you know, I grew up in the 20s, see? And you can... We grew up like in the in the late eighties, like that's when we really came up into the into the nineties. Like by two thousand and one, mm-hmm. this was we were we hit our stride. Um, all along that whole time, I was always told, "Don't shit where you eat." Yes, that was literally a rule verbatim that I was given multiple times because 
when I got out of college and I started working, I was in my early 20s. You met me when I was in my early 20s. I was just a walking hard on. Hell yes. I guess my second part here is for the, the Vivians of the world. Don't be a fucking bitch like that. You don't know what the fuck happened in that room. And yeah. again, look at your friend L. Well, not friend, but look at L. Look at him. And then go, uh, are you okay? Maybe yeah. let's start with that question instead of like, ah, you had me fooled, you slut. Fuck you. Fuck you well, and your fucking Bob. I'll, 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 I'll say this and I'll defend Vivian for like a, a, a split second. There is nothing more fun. And all you people out there that have jobs, there is nothing more fun than talking shit about people you work with. So, Vivian, oh, yeah. go right the fuck ahead. <laughs> Why stick around and get the whole story? It's way more fun to talk shit about people you work with. You're right again. So Elle then tells Emmett what happened and that she's quitting. Emmett tries to get her to stay, but she decides, screw this. She packs up and she's ready to go back to L.A. And her last stop is to say goodbye to Paulette at the nail salon. And she sees the professor from earlier in the movie who kicked her out of class at the salon. The yep. professor then challenges her to stay because fuck Callahan. And rightfully so. This is where I would have been if I were the law professor here. This is what I would have maybe written in is, yeah, we've had rumors, heard rumors that this guy's a piece of shit for a long time. I'll be taking this up with the dean. Something like that. Just throw something out there that says there's actually going to be some sort of repercussion because Callahan, outside of losing a client, yeah, faces no fine. Yeah, no, he's you're still right. Teaching at Harvard, he's still going to have a prestigious law firm. He's still going to get cases. I mean, what the great. I, although I agree with you, if you have that here, you don't necessarily have the ending of this movie. Yeah, that's fair, but. You know, who am I? I don't write. I barely read. So, <laughs> yeah, let me tell you something. A, a good writer, not me, but a good writer could have found a way out of that. <laughs> Vivian realizes what actually happened with Al. So her and Emmett have Brooke fire Callahan and hire Elle as her attorney with Emmett as the supervising attorney. Elle's first assignment is to start questioning the daughter and it starts out rough until she hears that the daughter had a perm that day. Elle then leans into the witness until she admits that she shot her father. And just like that, Elle wins her very first case. And yay for Elle. And Callahan's out a client and, and whatever. I love Linda Cardellini. I am Fantastic. right there with you. Since Freaks and Geeks. Yep. She is amazing. Yep. No, I, and I didn't really recognize her. I mean, I did. Oh, that but I, was fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. So the, the I only had one problem with this scene because mm -hmm. we've gone through the whole thing from the beginning, which is Elle's an airhead. She knows about fashion and design, but that's about it. Mm -hmm. To she studies for the LSATs, passes those, gets into Harvard Law, and she's apparently kicking ass at Harvard Law. And then she has to and I get it it's probably nerve-wracking as a lawyer your first time up right. especially as a freshman well a first year law student in a murder uh, trial in a murder trial so it's got to be nerve-wracking but it oh like her stumbling and bumbling like I almost I almost wanted it to start off a little bit faster yeah I, I would I would have been fine if she would have because I agree with you here if she if she would have bumbled to start and then like kind of like a couple people give her a nod, you know, she looks around the room or friends yeah. kind of wink at her. Luke Wilson's yeah. like, yeah, everybody's got her back. And then she's like, all right, takes a deep breath and then just starts fucking going ham. The case is done. Elle wins her first case. Warner tracks Elle down outside the courtroom, tries to get back with her. And Elle tells him to eat shit. And she walks out of the courtroom. And then we flash forward to two years later with Elwood's graduating from Harvard Law. She gives the commencement speech and the movie ends as we get updates on everyone. I didn't expect a lot going in 
because I again I hadn't seen it in a while and I but I respect this movie for what it is because the, the the writers of this movie knew what it was and I love when comedies do that. Like, mm-hmm. this is the genre of comedy we are, and we're going to stay here. We're yeah. not going to try to split off into this serious, you know, drama type thing, and everybody learns a lesson and whatever. Um, the only thing that I hate with with comedies is at the end when we get the updates. Like, you could just end the movie. Al, Al gives a commencement speech, movie done. I don't I don't care that him that Emmett and L get engaged. I don't care about the friends. I don't care about, no. you know, whatever. I we 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 don't really need that. Um but so many movies to this day still do that. Yeah, and it's typically these these movies, it's typically movies geared more towards kids. Uh I think that they do that just because the attention span is non-existent. By and large, uh, that, that's fair, but that's it. Yeah, that does. It does take away. It almost. This comedy to me felt a lot like Big Daddy, the Adam Sandler movie. Hell yes. Yes. Where it's ridiculous and it's goofy and it's silly, but it is based in a reality that yeah. we can all kind of take in and absorb and we're a part of it. And every character fits in that reality and nobody's breaking from it. Yep. Right. Totally fine with that. These title cards, though, every time they make me feel like I'm watching fucking Animal House again, which is not like that. <laughs> yes. That is just completely off the fucking rails. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? And it just kind of like, ugh, like it just takes away from it. Yeah. And like I said earlier, like this particular one makes it seem like her entire motivation for everything was to get married because at the beginning of the movie, like her character arc here. Because her uh, uh, at the beginning of the movie, she's excited to get engaged. And at the end of the movie, she got engaged to Emmett. Yeah. All of this was for that? Yeah, that, Emmett that I didn't. doesn't strike me as the kind of guy that, like, you could have just went to Boston and met Emmett. <laughs> you know what? You didn't have to go through fucking law school to do that. Absolutely. All, all, in, all in all, though, like, outside of that little bit, mm-hmm. like... This was a a well written comedy mm-hmm. um, that knew what it was, stayed in its lane. Like it was, yep. the the comedy writing was funny without mm-hmm. being too over the top. You know what I mean? Um, oh yeah, yeah like I mean, every- it was. It obviously had its over the top moments, but everybody that was supposed to be a, a foil to L. Played their part very well. Everybody yep. that was supposed to be a straight man played their part really well. And Reese, you know, I mean, fucking Reese, she's Reese Witherspoon, dude. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> she's such a good actress, which mm-hmm. makes watching this, like, and seeing her in the morning show and then watching this, like, oh, dude, her range is fucking ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Between like this, the morning show, walk the line. Uh, yep. wild where she maybe says two words the whole fucking movie yeah you know like uh she can do anything can't yeah can't uh sing her praises enough she's fantastic no, no, i will absolutely. say though in, in 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 this movie this character l would be the most annoying fucking person in the world to date and i know a lot of women so love this movie i know a lot of women love this movie including mm-hmm. like my wife um but if you ask them to be a hundred percent honest, if L was your best friend, how long would you guys be friends? And they would tell you for about a week because she is so fucking annoying. L L is a dope human being, but she is fucking extra. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Extra. But that's that's all I got. I really like this movie. Um, you know, it's like I said earlier. It's just like this fun, bubbly comedy, like. You could just sit down, watch it. It's really quick. It's paced really well. And and it's funny. Yeah, I mean, look, if I had to sum it up in a nutshell, this is you sandwich this movie in between Clueless, which is high school, and Parks and Rec, which is post-college. You basically got the same character going through 
the same progression. And and you have a you have a full arc. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, that's that's perfect. And so we'll we'll end on that. Um, but that's uh, that's all I got for this. I'm assuming. Do you have anything else? No. I'm, all right. I'm good. Cool. Cool. Well, for Corey, I'm Armando. This is Kiss the Reviews, and this was 2001's Legally Blonde.